Hey traders, hope you're doing well. In today's video, I want to break down the source code to a script I wrote a long time ago. That script is called the aggressive pullback indicator, and it's designed to detect pullbacks in the uh, Forex markets. That was its original intent. But of course it works on any market. Um, this was actually the very first script I ever published. So if we come to my trading view profile and scroll to the bottom of my script list, this is the very first script I ever published my aggressive pullback indicator back in June of 2018. A lot's happened since 2018, uh, but the markets haven't changed. Pullbacks are still an effective way to trade. And so in today's video, we're going to take the script, update it to version five syntax with the latest PineScript features, including uh, importing libraries. So you'll get to see a lot of different techniques in today's video. So if you're interested in that, stick around. And uh, after the disclaimer, we will get coding. None of the material in this video is financial advice. I'm experienced in managing my own finances, but I'm not qualified to give anyone advice on what to buy or sell. Everything I do in these videos is purely to demonstrate coding techniques, and the code I write is purely for example purposes. You should always do your own research and due diligence before engaging in trading or investing, and please seek professional guidance if you need it. With that said, let's look at some code. All right, so as mentioned, the purpose of this script, the reason I created it in the first place was to help me trade a pullback system created by one of my very first trading coaches or mentors, uh, Stephen Hart from the trading channel. Stephen has come a long way since then. He's got 2.5 million subscribers. When I first found his channel, he had about 100,000. He's one of the biggest um, trading YouTubers on the planet. Uh, but anyway, this system he'd created called the pullback strategy he has changed the rules over the years, but this is the original incarnation of my tool I created to help me trade this pullback system. Now, this isn't a trading lesson, so I'm not going to tell you the rules. You can use all kinds of rules effectively to trade pullbacks. Um, the way I used to trade it was basically this script will sometimes pick up false positives, so I wouldn't trade every signal it detected. But this signal here would meet my rules. We've got a one, two, three move break above uh, the EMA and then a pullback that does not break the prior low and we get a valid pullback signal here. I would, back in 2018, when I started learning systematic trading and rules-based trading, this is the very first system I learned to trade that made me a consistently profitable trader. And how I used to trade it was I'd enter long, stop loss here, one target here. Once that was hit, I would trail my stop loss on my open position until it got hit by a price action. So it was a two target system, very simple. I traded the four hour time frame on the major pairs and it was quite effective back in 2018. It's probably changed now. I don't trade the system the same way anymore. So so again, this is not a trading video. This is not trading advice. This is, this is just what I did back in the day. So this particular tool is an indicator. So it's not a strategy script. What I would normally do is select my script. It would say API alert or aggressive pullback indicator alert. I would create my alert. And then whenever a signal was uh, generated, I would get a push notification to my phone and I would come and check the charts and uh, enter my trades manually. So today's lesson is an indicator script. It's a market analysis tool. Um, just a good example, a good template for you guys to work with if you're interested in analyzing pullbacks. So with all that said, let's jump into the Pine editor and get coding. All right, so I've already written out the code to this script, but I'll delete all that code so that I can build out each section one by one and explain what I'm doing. The full source code, as always, will be in the pinned comment below in the video description if you want to um, jump ahead, copy it, and, and play around with it. But if you're interested in understanding the code, stick around, and I'll explain everything. So first of all, uh, I need overlay to true so, I, so that I can draw over price action. I'm importing my Zen library. So my Zen library, um, I'll go over that later, but basically it's just a... Um, it's basically just a, a script library. It contains a bunch of code that I reuse in a lot of my uh, scripts like candlestick detection and certain um, market condition uh, filters. Uh, it's all included in my library and I can simply access them by typing zen.control space and here is the list of functions included in my library and I'll use a couple of these in today's script. So I'm going to copy over some code here. We'll start with some user inputs as always. Now I could have added a lot more um, indicator uh, settings here, but I've kept it really simple for today's lesson. So we've only got an EMA length, a stop size multiplier of the ATR, a risk, re uh, risk reward profile and a signal type. EMA is just the EMA period. Stop distance is a multiplier of the ATR. So by default, it's a one ATR stop loss. 
and the risk reward is by default a one-to-one -one risk reward. So very simple settings here. Next up, uh, I'm just going to check, uh, create two persistent variables here, or constant variables. Um, these variables will never change. These are two Boolean variables. I can add bool on the end here just to make it clear what they are. So this will dictate whether or not this uh, script generates long and or short signals. So we're just checking is signal type set to both or long. If that's true, then we are taking long trades and the same for short trades. So if I save my code, open up the settings. This would only detect long trades. This would only detect short trades and both would detect both. Um, this is how I manage that setting here. And we reference these values later. The next thing I need to do is just get some indicator values or uh, so we're getting our EMA value using the standard method. We pass in our EMA length and we're generating it based on the closing price. Uh, our ATR is hard coded as a 14 period ATR. Again, you could change these into user inputs if you wanted to tweak them. Um, but since this isn't a system script, it's not a strategy script, it's not generating trades. It's not a lot of benefit to um, adjusting that unless it, it suits um, your trading uh, rules and system. Normally I just hard code a lot of these indicator values when I'm dealing with an indicator. Um, but with strategy scripts, you obviously want to see the effect of tweaking these values. So yeah, that's just a matter of preference for you guys if you want to expand the script to add user inputs. Next we have a uh, stop size. So this is what generates our stop loss size in pips or points in the, in the stock market. Um, so this value is going to be the current ATR value multiplied by our stop size or stop distance input. So if I set this to two, we'll have a two ATR stop loss. You get the idea. Next up, we need to calculate our stop loss and target prices. Now, because this isn't a strategy script, this is very simple for an indicator script. This is a lot um, less complicated than it would be for a strategy script. For this, I just need a single trade stop price and a single trade target price. This script doesn't take long and short trades at the same time. So we can just store one stop and one target price for every trade it uh, detects. However, for our long and short uh, stop losses, they obviously need to be different because a long stop is below price, a short stop is above price. So the formula is a little bit different for that. Long entry size is actually in pips. So this should probably say distance that's a little bit confusing because I associate size with position sizing. So I'll change that to distance and we'll have to tweak the script as we go. And this should say stop really not entry. I don't, don't know what I was thinking there. Um, to be fully honest with you, when I first started trading, I was a stoner musician. So I was probably smoking weed when I wrote the script. I don't do that anymore <laughs> because uh, it did not help me uh, with focus as a trader. So that's a habit I've dropped since I became a trader. You have to make a lot of sacrifices as a uh, professional trader. So long stop distance, short stop distance. Now, because I'm calculating my long stop and short stop distance as pips, um, things are a little bit different here. This is subtracting the lowest low from the closing price. So let's say uh, this was an entry reason here entry signal. So I'm taking my closing price and I'm subtracting the low, the lowest low that gives me this distance here. And then I add my stop loss distance, which is uh, this multiplied by the ATR. So a two ATR stop would be down here somewhere. So I'm, I'm adding on that extra stop loss distance. And this gives me my stop loss distance in pips not a price stop loss, a pip based stop loss. And then I can use that to calculate my stops and targets later after we've quote unquote entered the trade or, or um, generated the entry signal. I can use this information to generate my stop loss and then I can use my stop loss distance to generate my take profit distance. So we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. So next up, I need my signal rules. So I've just written a few comments here to explain the rules. Each entry only has three rules or, or some of these are merged together. I simplified this script a bit. There used to be six rules, but I've consolidated them down into uh, three. So the first rule is that we need an engulfing candle. That engulfing candle must be above the EMA for long trades or below for short trades. Rule number two is that the 
entry candle must be the current swing low or high for a short trade. So we're only looking for extremes in price action. We're looking for a swing low and then an engulfing candle to occur. Or in the case of a short trade, uh, we're looking for a uh, we're looking for a swing high and then an engulfing candle below the EMA. So the EMA keeps us in the right direction trend wise and momentum wise. The engulfing candle is our entry signal. Um, the engulfing candle must be a current swing high or swing low. And the engulfing candle must not be massive. So sometimes you'll see um, situations like this, where maybe this was the swing low, and then you have a gigantic engulfing candle, which is clearly not tradable. I wouldn't, I would never, when I was trading the system, I would never enter a candle this big. And so I do have a filter in this pullback detection to eliminate detecting giant um, engulfing candles. So with all that said, let's copy over my actual entry code and I'll explain what's happening. So here I'm validating long trades and short trades. We're combining our three rules, which are listed here. So to keep things simple, I'll just focus on long trades for now so that we can easily wrap our head around what's happening here. The short trade is identical, it's just flipped. So we're checking if the closing price is above the EMA. And I'm using my Zen library here to use a function I created to count how many bars have closed below the given MA value over the given look back period. This function call here is checking how many bars close below the EMA over the past three bars. That number needs to be less than, equal to or less than one. So we can only have one bar close below the EMA over the past three bars. If we have more than that, it's an invalid trade because we're whipsawing around the EMA. And I'm detecting my bullish engulfing candlestick pattern using my Zen library as well. That simplifies my code quite a bit. Um, both of these two functions cut out, I don't know, maybe 20 lines of code, maybe not quite that many, but um, it cuts out a bit of complexity. Um, and I use these filters quite often in a lot of my scripts, so that's why I created my Zen library. If you're interested in the source code to this, I already have a, a lesson on the channel. I'm um, breaking down the source code to the Zen library script. It's completely open source. Um, but if you want to quickly see what this is doing, you can hold down control, click on that function, here is the uh, Zen library script. Um, here's the documentation is a loose word for it. Here's the description of each, um, each function and what it does, what parameters it takes, what it spits out or returns. It's a more technical word for that. If I scroll down here um, and expand my source code, if I find bullish engulfing candle, here is all the checks for a bullish engulfing candle. There are some optional parameters that I'm not going to touch in today's uh, video. You can read through this documentation if you're interested. There are also other candlestick patterns. We could detect dojis, we could detect hammer and star candles instead of engulfing candles, which look like this. Uh, that would be a hammer candle and a star candle the opposite way. You could. Uh, these are great entry reasons as well in pullbacks. They also make for good uh, mean reversion candlestick patterns. But anyway, back to the scripts. The next rule was that we need to be a swing high or low. So here we're just checking, is the current bar the lowest low over the past seven bars? Or was the previous bar the lowest low? So in the case of this trade here, or this signal here, the previous bar was the, the lowest low over the past seven bars. In the case of this bar here, the signal candle was the lowest low over the past seven bars. So we need to check for both in order to accurately detect a swing low. Next, we have ensure engulfing candle is not massive. So we're making sure that the closing price is lower than the highest opening price over the past five bars. So here we have one, two, three, four, five. This is our opening price over that five bar period, the highest opening price. Our close must be below that. This stops the script from detecting candles like the one I showed you earlier here. This definitely closed well above the highest open over the past five bars. So this doesn't count as a pullback trade. This is more of a breakout trade at this stage because we've broken highs. Um, I'm not looking for that with this particular signal script. I'm looking for pullbacks that I can enter on. And uh, a candle that closes above the pullback, that's not a pullback anymore, that's a breakout. So that's not what this script is looking for. The second check here is that the current bar's true range is less than the ATR, the current ATR multiplied by two. So the uh, candle size 
must be less than this value times two. So if I hover over that bar, that's 26. So we're looking at about a 52, 53 pip um, candle size. So if the candle size was any bigger than that, uh, we would not enter it either. Because again, we need a stop loss um, below the swing low. And this script shoots for pretty tight targets. So if the targets are way up here, it becomes more of a trend following system rather than a uh, pullback system so or, or strategy so it's a matter of preference but that's how i wrote the script because i didn't want to capture signals that had really wide stops and targets and that's it those are our rules the conditions for entry it's quite simple really if you think about it the code looks complicated if you're new to pine script but it's really not that complicated we're just combining a few indicated conditions um, and a few price action conditions with a candlestick pattern to generate an entry. And it's surprisingly effective. As I always say on my channel, uh, I think simple is better when it comes to systems. And that's still true. I mean, I started trading in 2018, about seven years ago. I now trade over half a million. I still keep it simple. I'm still keeping my, uh, my trading simple. And so that hasn't changed since I began trading, even as a broke university dropout. Um, I've always kept my trading simple to this day and it works for me. That's how I like to trade. Uh, again, sh the short signals are the same, but just uh, flipped. So let's move on to our entry or, or signal generation code. So if I copy this over here, we're checking are all our long and short conditions met. These two here combine all of our rules. Uh, if all of our rules are met for either trade, then we save our stop price and our target price. Our stop price is calculated by subtracting our long stop distance from the closing price. So, so I would typically enter on the closing price of the signal back when I traded this system. So my stop loss would be the distance from the closing price of the signal candle down to um, below the swing low. Subtracting our long stop distance in pips from the entry price and for our target price, we simply add our long stop distance multiplied by our risk reward. So if we've got a 10 pip stop loss from our entry, we would have a 10 pip target from our entry. Um, unless I change this to two, then we would have a 20 pip target and a 10 pip stop. Anyway, we're nearly done. The last thing to do is draw all of this information onto the chart. So let's do that next. I can get rid of this placeholder plot. Um, I'll scroll over it for a second and just show you guys, you're not missing out anything. The fact that this is cut off, uh, this is just descriptions, tool tips for the uh, inputs. And this is just plot code. I'm using plot style line break. Yeah, this looks a bit complicated. I'll break it down. The first thing we're doing is plotting our EMA. Then we're using plot shape to plot triangles above and below our entries. And then we're drawing our stops and targets. The reason this is so complicated, this formula, is that because I'm not using persistent variables to track our, our trade stop price and trade target price, these variables reset on every bar that is not a valid long or short trade. So you don't have to understand what's happening here. There's a lot of ternary operators, these are called. So all we're checking here is, do we have a valid trade on the current bar or the previous bar? If so, then we check, is it on the current bar? If it's on the current bar, we can just draw the trade stop price because that was just calculated on this tick, on this bar. Otherwise, if we are not currently a valid long trade, that means that we must have been valid on the previous bar. And so we draw the previous bars trade stop price. That way we get a slightly longer stop loss drawing. If I don't have this, then our stop loss, if I don't have the code written this way, then our stop loss and target are just these tiny little dashes, which are really hard to see. So I made this plot code just a little bit more complicated purely for visual purposes so that we get a slightly longer um, stop and target drawing. Um, but anyway, I could consolidate all of these down into just trade stop price and trade uh, target price, but I did choose to separate all of these into long stop, short stop. Um, and so over in the data window here, or wherever that is here, data window, um, they're all separated into their own um, boxes here. Anyway, that's it for the script. The final thing I did was generate alerts. So let's copy that code over and wrap this up. Um, I'm using the alert condition function. I could have also used the um, if valid long, then generate an alert this way. I opted for this version because it was simpler. And also because back in uh, 
2018, the alert function didn't exist. So I <laughs> just left that in the way it is um, for this video. So now if I save my code, we have an API alert for our alert title and our message is pullback signal four. And then this is a placeholder tag that will be replaced with the symbol that we set the alert on. Very simple. Let's uh, zoom out and have a look at some signals. Um, it's a it's a pretty effective pullback system. Let me make sure all my settings are default. As you can see, it uh, detects some some decent opportunities here. Uh, again, this is not a trading video. This is not a trading lesson. This is not financial advice. Um, but this is worth exploring if you're researching systems. It's worth playing around with. Have a look. Try try your own. Um, entry criteria, market conditions, candlestick patterns. Um, but as you can see, this is cherry picking just the past dozen or so trades, but we've had more winners here than losers. It's not a complete waste of time to investigate this type of system. And again, depending how you trailed your stop loss um, or managed your profit, uh, could have been a lot more profitable than just one to one. If you'd like to learn more about PineScript, check out our website. I have a completely free six hour PineScript basics course there, which explains the core fundamentals of Pine. And if you want to take your coding skills to the next level, check out my mastery course. We have over 50 hours of content and 50 plus five star reviews and growing. The PineScript mastery course also comes with support where I can help answer any questions you have about PineScript coding. And of course, there's tons of free content on my YouTube channel. So if you're new to PineScript, go and check that out too. Anyway, that'll do it for today's video. I hope you found this interesting. If you did, make sure to please subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you as part of our community, as part of our uh, followers. I appreciate every single one of you. I read every single comment. I can't always reply, um, but I do read them all and I appreciate every single one of you. Even those of you who, are, who don't always have positive things to say, but most of you do, and I love that. I'm really grateful for that. Uh, you're all amazing. I wish you the best of luck with your trading and I'll speak with you in the next video. I don't think there'll be a video next week because my fiance and I, uh, Jade, will be going away on holiday. She runs our support team, so there will be a little bit of a blackout with support next week, unfortunately. But we'll be back hitting the ground running when we return from our holiday. So make sure to subscribe, check out our resources, the website, theartoftrading.com. We've got tons of stuff there, tons of free stuff. And uh, premium paid stuff that goes to the next level if you're wanting to uh, take this stuff to the next level yourself. Um, anyway, that's all. Take care. I love you all. Goodbye.